What up, y'all? This is your boy, Mr. Downtown Ray Mellon. You're listening to the Entertainment Report on iHeartRadio, live from Orlando for Monday, October 10th, 2022, delivering some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, facebook.com slash the Entertainment Report with Ray Mello. That's R-A-Y-M-E-L-O on Twitter at the Enter Report or on Instagram at the Entertainment Report. You can listen to the show anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app, search for the Entertainment Report, and I'll take you to the page. I hope everyone had a fantastic weekend. The South Korean psychological thriller Somebody, headed to Netflix in November, brings a dark and menacing chill to the search for that special someone. The eight-part series by noted film director Jung Yoo Woo debuted at the Busan International Film Festival with its first three episodes on Thursday. App developed Kim Sun, played by Kang Ham Lim, has a hard time making connections in real life. Her emotions are as flat as her monochromatic outfits and minimalistic officer decor. Diagnosed with Asperger's, Kim's closest relationship appears to be with Al, chat box she created while still in high school. Her program, Genius, ultimately leads to the development of Somebody, a groundbreaking dating app that has recently been at the center of a police investigation into depths and disappearances tracing back to the platform. As King looks for answers behind the scenes, she encounters a figure with several different online profiles, the strikingly handsome Yu Noon, played by King Young Clown whose gentle uh, demeanor scans as creepy as almost immediately. The, Je- the Jeffrey Dahmer-style eyeglasses don't help. The menacing role is a departure for the model actress Kim, who is the most established performer in the cast, who recently starred in the 2021 Netflix dramedy Hello Me and the hit action comedy film Mission Possible. Zach Woods and Lenora Churlo said season two of Avenue 5 premiering on Monday on HBO added new dangers to the science fiction uh, comedy. Wood plays customer relations head Matt Spencer, while Churlo uh, plays second engineer Billy McCabe uh, on a space adrift in to outer space. Season one of Avenue 5 aired in 2020. Season two was delayed when co- the COVID-19 pandemic began. Woods and Chirlo returned to work on season two under COVID-19 safety protocols. Rehearsals <laughs> occurred over Zoom uh, and masks were employed behind the scenes. But Woods noted that the show still filmed maskless actors in quote crowds of people screaming in each other's mouth. Woods said of his reaction, all right, I hope this joke is funny because it's dangerous. Chirlo said she worried in between seasons that the pandemic would prevent the industry from continuing to work. The cast of Avenue 5 also includes Hugh Laurie as Captain Ryan Clark, Josh Gad as founder Herman Judd, and all the actors playing passengers. Many of the scenes require the actors to walk between portions of the ship to address problems that arise. Saturday Night Live alum and Portlandia actor Fred Armisen is playing the iconic role of Uncle Fester in the new Netflix series Wednesday. Armisen's casting was revealed at the New York Comic Con Saturday night. Set to premiere on November 23rd, the live action show stars Jenna Ortega as Wednesday Adams, Louis Guzman and Catherine Zeta Jones as her parents, Gomez and Morticia, Gwendolyn Christie and Christina Ricci co stars. Uh, the streaming service said in a press release from the imagination of Tim Burton, Wednesday is a sleuthing, supernaturally infused mystery charting Wednesday Adams' years as a student at Nevermore Academy, where she attempts to master her emerging psych- uh, psychic ability, thwart a monstrous killing spree that has terrorized the local town, and solve the murder mystery that embroils her parents 25 years ago, all while navigating her new and very tangled relationships at Nevermore. Snap, snap. Created by cartoonist Charles Adams in 1938, The Adams Family was adapted as a TV series in the 1960s, starring John Astin, Carolyn Jones, Lisa Loring, and Jackie Coogan as Gomez, Morticia, Wednesday, and Festa, respectfully. In the 1991 movie called The Adams Family Reimagining, the intellectual property with uh, Raul Julia, Angelica Houston, Richie, and Christopher Lloyd as Gomez, Morticia, Wednesday, and Fester. It was followed by the sequel Adams Family Values in 1993. The franchise has also included several animated films. 
Jodie Whittaker's final Doctor Who adventure, The Power of the Doctor, set to premiere on BBC platforms October 23rd. Whittaker starred in three seasons of the British sci-fi franchise. Sex education alum uh, Nakati Gatwa was announced as her successor in May. The new trailer for the finale, released on, on Saturday, features Whittaker as a time traveler, taking on Dalek, the Cybermen, and Sasha Dawn's The Master. Kelsey Grammer and daughter Spencer Grammer will star in a new Lifetime movie. Lifetime said in a press release that Grammer will executive produce and star with Spencer Grammer, his 38-year-old daughter, with ex-wife Doreen Alderman in the holiday movie The 12 Days of Christmas Eve. The 12 Days of Christmas Eve follows Brian Conway, played by Grammer, a successful businessman. whose relationships have really suffered, including with his daughter, Michelle, played by Spencer Grammer, and his only uh, granddaughter. Uh, the official description reads, After Brian gets into an accident on Christmas Eve, Santa gives him 12 chances to redo the day and repair the relationships in his, fi- in his life to find the true meaning of Christmas. For Brian, these 12 days are a journey of self-realization about life, love, and happiness as he attempts to right the wrongs in his life in pursuit of the Christmas spirit. The 12 Days of Christmas Eve is written by Erlene Train Donahue and directed by Dustin Rucker. The film is produced by Grammar's Gramnet NH Production and Johnson's Production Group. Grammar said in a statement, I can't say enough how gifted my daughter is, and working with her is long overdue. I'm very much looking forward to it. On top of that, there is nothing I like more than a good Christmas movie. With Lifetime, Spencer, and the rest, that's exactly what we're making. The 12 Days of Christmas Eve will premiere as part of Lifetime's It's a Wonderful Lifetime Holiday Slate. Grammar will also reprise Frasier Crane in a Frasier reboot that got the series greenlit at Paramount Plus this week. Disney announced it has ordered the second season of Marvel's Moon Girl Endeavor's Devil Dinosaur ahead of the animated series February 10th premiere on Disney Channel. The comic book adaptation will stream on Disney Plus shortly after its television debut. The Renault News was announced Saturday at New York Comic Con. A clip from the show's theme song, Moon Girl Magic, was also introduced. The song was written and produced and executive, uh, by, and by executive music producer Raphael Sadiq and performed by series star... Uh, uh, Diamond White, who voices the character Lunella, a.k.a. Moon Girl. A synopsis says the series follows the adventure of 13-year-old super genius Lunella Lafayette and her 10-ton T-Rex devil dinosaur, whom she accidentally brings through time into present-day New York City. Uh, Equipped with devils fiercely loyalty and brawn, the loving support of her family and best friend Casey, Nalella sets out to make a difference and protect her Lower East Side neighborhood from danger. The show stars Fred Tescacori as Devil Dinosaur, Alfie Woodard as Nalella's uh, grandmother Mimi, uh, Libby Barrier as Nalella's best friend and manager Casey, Shashir Zamata as Nalella's mother, Adria, Jermaine Fowler as Nalella's da- uh, dad, James Jr., James uh, Gary Anthony Williams as Nunella's grandfather Pops, and series executive producer Lawrence Fishburne in the recurrent role of the Beyonder, a trickster. Elle Fanning has officially been attached to the new video game from Hideo Kimoji. Uh, Kimiji, a famed Japanese video game designer, director, and producer, confirmed the news Friday on Twitter. Reports of Fanning's involvement first surfaced after a QR code at the PAX Australia gaming convention led by Kajimi Productions' website with a poster featuring Fanning. One poster shows Fanning with her face obscure, while another shows her face under red lighting. The posters feature the words, Who Am I? and Where I Am. Fanning is an actress known for playing Princess Aurora in the Maleficent films and young Catherine the Great in the Hulu series The Great. Kimiji, uh, Kimiji is known for the Metal Gear video game series and the 2019 Death Stranding. Death Stranding starred Norman Reedus, Leah Ziado, Guillermo del Toro, uh, Mar- uh, Margaret Qualley, Mats Mikkelsen, and Lindsay Wagner. Kimiji has yet to announce other details about the game, which is uh, rumored to be a horror game titled Overdose. Love Goddess comedian Julie Tanuna has died. The actress and stand-up comedian died Thursday following a battle with ovarian cancer. Her longtime manager, Roger Paul, told the New York Times she was 72. Variety confirmed the news. Tanuta, 
known to her fans as the Love Goddess or the uh, Aphrodisiac of the Accordion, came to fame in the 1980s. She performed at the Comedy Store in Los Angeles and other clubs and had comedy specials on HBO, Showtime, and Lifetime during her career. Tanuta was known for her brash style of humor, outlandish outfits, and for playing the accordion during her shows. As an actress, Tanuta appeared in the films Material Girls, Sister Mary and Gibsonburg, and the TV series General Hospital and the We Were Al show. Uh, Tanuta is survived by her partner, Vern Pang, along with six siblings, two nephews, four nieces, and a grandniece. She'll be interior at the Hollywood Forever Cemetery in Los Angeles. Tanuta was 72. Musician Kanye West has slammed Facebook co-founder Mark Zuckerberg after Instagram, which is owned by the social media company, restricted his account over rants on the platform that have been viewed as anti-Semitic. West uh, tweeted Saturday, look at this, Mark. How you going to kick me off Instagram used to be uh, used to be my friend. Hours later, he added another tweet, who do you think created cancel culture? West's Instagram account was restricted Friday night after he posted a screenshot of text messages with Sean Combs, also known as P. Diddy, stemming from his controversial White Lives Matter shirt at a Paris Fashion Week last Monday, and a feud with uh, Tremaine Embry over comments about the late Virgil Abloh. A uh, Twitter spokesperson confirmed to UPI on Sunday that West has now also been locked out of his account on that platform as well. In the sense, deleted messages with Combs, Diddy asked West to stop playing these internet games, to which West responded that he would use Combs as an example to show the Jewish people that told you to call me that no one can threaten or influence you. West, in a now-deleted tweet, also said that after the restriction, he can't be anti-Semitic because black people are actually Jew also. West said, you guys have toyed with me and tried to blackball anyone who ever opposes your agenda. West, who seemingly uh, most recently tweeted in November 2020, returned to the platform Friday after he was restricted on Instagram. Elon Musk, the CEO of Tesla, who is seeking to acquire the platform, tweeted at the rapper, welcome back to Twitter, my friend. Facebook has not restricted Wes. Wes went on a rant during an interview with right-wing commentator uh, Tucker Carlson on his Fox News program on Thursday in which he doubled down on his White Lives Matter shirt, called the promotion of, of, of obesity genocide of the black race, and criticized his ex-wife Kim Kardashian. Charlie Poof is back with new music. The 30-year-old singer released the album Charlie and a music video for the song Loser on Friday. The Loser video shows Poof playing a bumbling actor on the set of a Western movie. Charlie also features the songs That's Hilarious, Charlie Be Quiet, Light Switch, There's a First Time for Everything, Smells Like Me, Left and Right featuring John Cook, When You're Sad, I'm Sad, Marks on My Neck, Tears on My Piano, I Don't Think That I Like Her, and No More Drama. Poop said in an interview of GQ published Thursday that Charlie explores heartbreak. The star says, heartbreak is universal. Everyone is ultimately going to experience it. Maybe not even in a relationship in some way, shape, or form. You will have your heart broken. When people listen to this album, I want them to know that you, yourself, can be responsible for the healing. You, yourself, can make yourself feel better. Because I was going through such a tough time for two years, and this is uh, the thing that healed me. And I was the one who made it. I made my own Band-Aid. And I just want people to know that they're so capable of so much. Charlie Marks Poop's first album since Voice Notes was released in May 2018. Taylor Swift has unveiled the full track list of her album Midnights. The 32-year-old singer shared the final five song titles for, from the album late Thursday evening and early mo uh, Friday morning. The new tracks include track one, uh, uh, Lavender Haze. You're on Your Own, Labyrinth, Sweet Nothing, and uh, Snow on the Beach featuring Lana Del Rey. The Rey is the only artist to be featured on the album. Uh, Midnight's also includes the track Maroon, Antihero, You're on Your Own Kid, Midnight Rain, Question, Vigilante, The Jewel, Karma, and Mastermind. So I've discussed Lavender Haze in a video on Instagram saying that she first happened upon the phrase Lavender Haze while watching Mad Men. The singer said it turns out that it was a common phrase used in the 50s where they would just describe being in love. Like if you were in a Lavender Haze, then that meant that you were in all-encompassing love glow, and I thought that was really beautiful. And I guess theoretically, when you're in the Lavender Haze, you'll do anything to stay there and not let people bring you down off of that cloud. And I think a lot of people have to deal with this now. Now, not just like public figures because we live in the era of social media and 
if the world finds out that you're in love with somebody, they're going to weigh in on it. Like my relationship for six years, we have to dodge weird rumors, tabloid stuff, and we just ignore it. And so this song is about uh, the act of ignoring that stuff to protect the real stuff. Swift has been dating actor Joe Alwyn since 2016. Rapper Bad Bunny's Spanish language record, Un Verano CT, is the number one album in the U.S. album charts dated this week. Coming in number two on the Billboard 200 charts dated Saturday is Five Seconds of Summer with uh, Five Seconds of Summer 5, followed by Morgan Wallen's Dangerous, the double album number three, Blackpink's Born Pink at number four, and Harry Styles' Harry's House at number five. And at the top tier, Beyonce's Renaissance at number six, The Weeknd's The Highlights at number seven, Rod Wave's Beautiful Mind at number eight, Alice in Chains' is Dirt at number nine, and Zach Bryan's American Heartache, uh, Heartbreak at number ten. And finally, Sosie Bacon's horror movie, Smile, is the number one movie in North America for a second weekend, earning $17.6 million in receipts. Box Office Mojo.com announced on Sunday. Coming in number two is La La Crocodile with $11.5 million, followed by Amsterdam at number three with $6.5 million, The Woman King at number four with $5.3 million, and Don't Worry Darling at number five with $3.5 million. Running up the top tier are Avatar at number six with $2.6 million, Barbarian at number seven with two point eighteen million dollars. Bros at number eight with two point five fifteen million dollars. Terrific are number two at number nine with eight hundred twenty five thousand dollars. And Top Gun Maverick at number ten with eight hundred thousand dollars. This weekend's top ten grossed about fifty two point nine million dollars compared with last weekend's uh, top performers, which raked in at about fifty six point eight million dollars. With Smile in the lead with twenty two million dollars. And that was your entertainment report for Monday, October 10th, 2022. I'm your host, Mr. Downtown Ray Mello. I'll be back tomorrow to deliver some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Facebook.com slash The Entertainment Report with Ray Mello. That's R-E-Y-M-E-L-O on Twitter at The Entertainment Report or on Instagram at The Entertainment Report. You can listen to this episode or any previous episodes of The Entertainment Report Anytime you want on iHeartRadio, just go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app, search for the Entertainment Report, and it'll take you to the page. Good night, and God bless you all.